So, is this the right way to carry a boombox? This one makes a terrible noise when working, it makes a terrible hum. I don't know if the CD drive or the cassette drive are working okay, but we will test it. And uh, before I break my spine, let's get on with it. Shit's heavy. So this thing is making a terrible hum. When I insert it into the, the mains plug, it's doing a, an audible hum. And when I turn it on... It doesn't seem to do that big of a noise beyond the, the hum that, that can be heard and there's not too much to see the, beyond this terrible noise on the B deck. This thing is gigantic. Here it is. This is a Sansui and the model is somewhere. Oop. Compact disc player, karaoke portable RCT 770. Got the reverse module. Yeah, high speed dubbing. Yeah, some cool features. But it makes some weird noises. I think we need to start taking it apart because we also have a very loose rear end connector on the speakers so we might have also some grounding issues and this can also be powered by batteries and this is all Looking good, it looks like it had never had a leak, so that's a good sign. So let's start taking it apart. Too long, too short, too long. Well, I had to borrow a screwdriver to keep opening this. So, some days apart, let's continue. There is a wire glued with hot glue down here, but these three plugs will come out, and this whole unit will. Okay, here is the missing belt. Yeah, it's not really missing so for the noise problem we should be looking for something around here on the power supply board so looking inside here i can see some kind of oxidation down there by this capacitor but i don't think it is directly connected to these capacitors but to the yellow glue that's used on the PCB because I've seen uh, situations in other YouTube channels where this glue is uh, 
getting conductive or getting corrosive and started to uh, break parts and break connections so I will take this board out and analyze it outside this big frame so I'll try to find something on the power supply section first and then we will focus on the cassette mechanism and I hope the CD mechanism is working well we will just clean and lubricate everything recheck these ground connections and uh, yeah, everything will be fine I think so let's take this further apart mmm yum yum So to take this power supply board apart, we need to take this screw out on this metal bracket. Then the two screws on the figure of eight connector. Metal bracket is out. Uh, careful not to break anything. Battery in and as you can see we have a little bit of corrosion down here and by this cap yeah, this has the the aspect of already being some past work on it this glue will really give some trouble on, on some on some products and let's check some capacitors because I don't see a major problem on grounding. The grounding for these speakers is absolutely, absolutely terrible. They, 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 slide, they slide around, I need to fix this. But beyond that I don't see anything really terrible. I'll try to clean this, this yellow glue because it usually gives problems in the long run this is the kind of the yellowy glue that sometimes becomes conductive I'll pass it through the voltmeter in a moment to see if it could be the case it might have something to do with the corrosion on these wires so these wires are corroded the coating on them is coming out quite easily so it might also I haven't got under these parts it might have done some, some damage to it yeah. we'll just check the caps ESR or something this cap looks like it has had big hit from this transistor beyond that everything looks okay I'll try to remove as much of this yellow glue as I can first thing to check is to remove the main main filter capacitor and see how much does it hold we already have a broken wire that I know it's from this pin so, not a big deal. We can put it back together later. This is just for the battery power. Those two caps are my main suspects. This one because it looks heated. This one because it looks slightly bulged and it's full of that messy glue on the bottom and I want to show you something that I found on that board this is the brown glue that was holding on onto those capacitors inside the power supply board and 
uh, I've had one TV in the past that had this glue which caused some problems. I've seen it also on the Adrian's Digital Basement channel. He showed the Sony Trinitron that has this, had this glue causing troubles on one of the PCBs. But as you can see here, I will not be touching the multimeter leads and there's current flowing on the glue. Yeah, I guarantee you that the leads are far away from each other and as you can see there's current flowing on this old glue. Okay, this old glue becomes conductive and if you have any any kind of device any kind of of machine that has this glue holding components especially capacitors or something else remove it as soon as possible to avoid any other problems in the future as you can see i have my probes far away from each other and the glue is still conducting if you see stuff with this glue please remove it as soon as possible okay this is very problematic and can ruin your devices so be aware of that so we are dealing now with the hum from the transformer and see if there is any way to improve it and uh, maybe the resin or the varnish it's gone loose or the metallic parts uh, are loose or something and uh, yeah the only thing uh, the only thing left to do is to take the transformer out and try to compress the metal again make sure everything is uh, well tight and uh, I don't know uh, what else can we do uh, put some more varnish over it and try to minimize the oscillations inside this metal structure because that's what we hear as a hum from from the mains to this transformer I'll investigate what I can do and try to find a solution to make this transformer hum a bit less Yeah, we have three blades here, some three blades here on this place, maybe this varnishing all up will help with the noise reduction. And so I was looking to the transformer and after taking out the housing, I found that some of these blades got free, maybe the varnish as um, degraded or something and uh, I'm going to show it on the microscope because it's more easy to see and on the camera and you have these blades and some of them as you can see are free some of these spaces inside of the transformer um, have become loose and I think that's the main reason for it to produce such uh, big noises lots of people over the internet say that this must be done in a vacuum chamber to ensure that all the, the varnish gets inside the blades others suggest using a bath and dipping the whole transformer inside of it. Um, yeah, I think I will try a cheaper option. As you can see, this is probably the main unstuck blade that you can see here. Yeah, this one is completely free. So what I'll try to do is use varnish all around these blades to see if it penetrates 
on these small cracks, on these small spaces between the, the laminations and, and uh, see if we can reduce the noise being produced by this transformer. So I have some uh, plastic 70 insulation varnish, uh, colorless varnish. This is like a conformal coating and um, I think this will be enough to make a, a good good penetrating I think it's fluid enough to make a good penetration on the laminations and we will see if it will help uh, solve some of these uh, transformer noise I'll apply it some coatings of spray varnish I'll apply a lot of coatings and in all of the directions. And then I'll let it dry and apply some more layers. So let's see if we can get any result from it. And so after a turn of coatings of varnish and after reassembling the cage and applying varnish all over it again I think our transformer is done let's connect it to the power supply and uh, apply voltage and uh, see if we still have that humming sound so loud as it was before so let's do it so let's connect the power and see if we have a big hum or a big explosion. No noise at all. Is it turning on? I can't hear anything. Or we have solved the problem, or there's something wrong with this. Let's check if we have any output voltages. Mm -hmm. The voltages were alive. Connect the power. What we have around here. Yep, 13 volts AC. No more noise coming out of the transformer. Absolutely silent. And I call this a success. No hum at all. You can't even tell that it's being turned on. So we are good to go. Let's go to the next step. So, the first repair on this boombox is done. The coating of varnish made the transformer absolutely silent and I have no idea, my, my hearing can't tell if it's turned on or off. Okay, it's that silent. So, perfect solution. Let's go to the next step that is fixing the cassette mechanism and the CD mechanism of the rest of the radio. Let's go, let's go. Before I reassemble, I will be sure to make these ground connections strong. So something we could do to these connectors. Let me change the camera. Here is to put some solder under them and make them have a connection with solder to the structure. 
this will make a lot of smoke I hope I don't melt anything Okay, we are getting some good soldering. We need to wait a lot for it to cool down because it's a lot of heat on a small space, yeah, and it burns your fingers. Ideally, this should be done all over the plug, but now for testing reasons. It needs to hold between the two parts. Yeah, it's doing it. Uh, I'm melting a bit of the black plastic. Shh, stay, stay quiet. Yeah, some of the black plastic melted a bit. I'll try to clean it. Shouldn't do it this way, but. Clean it up a bit, try not to ruin the soldering iron tip. It's, it's looking strong. Now that I've melted that little bit, I need to use a file to clean it. So I'll clear the hole a little bit. with a round file just to compensate for the for the bad thing I did and let's check if we have more noise on the speakers so while I'm here I'll put some contact cleaner on this switch and this reset button let's marry them together again and test if it sounds good there you go hmm. the jacks let's see if it turns on first Yep, it powers on. CD drive makes a weird noise, but everything seems to work. But yeah, everything is working. But in absolute silence. Success! Let's repair the rest! So the big hum is fixed but the CD drive doesn't read the CDs, it doesn't even detect the disc and the cassette players, as you've seen before one of them does a lot of noise in one of the channels that's um, our next focus, it's going to be on the cassette mechanisms well, I've been listening to this and uh, this karaoke mode, karaoke mode was on and it made the sound uh, a little bit muffled so I turned it off and now the whole system sounds a lot better but there's still the noise on the left channel on the right cassette deck and that's, that's the thing I want to address next so first thing I will do to both cassette decks, it's a good clean. Clean them inside, clean the heads, clean the pinch rollers, and see if everything is uh, is okay down there. So let's do that.
this is a tape tag demagnetizer I don't believe it does anything but just to be sure I like to run it It plays exactly the same. It plays exactly the same. There's the noise. Well, I found something interesting. So the noise it makes, it reacts to the auto reverse mechanism. So without the tape inside, let's hear. You press play, it's playing, it does nothing. You change the direction, sometimes it does nothing. You change the direction again, noise on the left channel. That's why before I might have told you noise on one channel and then mistakenly told you noise on the other channel. So now I get back to the normal direction. Now it's noise on the right one. Yeah, it alternates between one and another and it's regarding the direction of the auto reverse mechanism. So it might be something to do with the contacts. Or something to do with a playhead but it's something weird it doesn't happen all the time but it reacts or no sometimes it reacts to the to the playhead sometimes it doesn't It might be any kind of bad contact or lack of use. Let's see what we can find inside. Because the mechanism for the auto reverse, it's not accessible. It might be hard to, to do anything to it other than giving it a good use. Turning on, radio seems to work. I don't know, but it might be a matter of time before it starts doing those weird noises. Or it was just lack of use. Yeah, it's more or less fixed. The humming noise is okay. The cassette drives seems that they are working okay right now the CD drive maybe it's unsolvable and the radio works so it's sort of fixed so I'll reassemble everything and consider it fixed there's one thing that never worked for me that is tweaking the laser potentiometers that's why I always replace the pickups but on this boombox when I put a good surface disc inside it will give it a little spin sometimes so I might have some kind of hope about this CD player well as you can see, it started rotating, but it only does that from time to time. And uh, let me test again. Yeah, as you can see, it rotates the disc. So let's try to tweak the pot and see if we can do anything to it. Yeah, but it looks like it's trying 
more and more as time goes by. So we might have some hope in here. Let's see what we can do. I managed to pull the CD drive out. I'm going to clean the LCD screen and some other stuff while tweaking the potentiometer of the laser. And so I've adjusted the potentiometer on the laser and I think it's for the second time in my life uh, trying these on multiple machines that I've had success. So I put the disc in. As you can see, the disc starts spinning and it finds out four tracks. If I press play and the disc starts playing. Whoa! Success! It's reading! It's reading the disc! So let's hook up the speakers, reassemble everything and test it. I'm surprised. And it keeps playing successfully. Some discs play well, uh, some other don't, but I think it's the best we can get from this from this repair it's a bit sketchy a bit sensitive to the touch but yeah it's okay and so like this our bomb box is partially fixed we got rid of the transformer noise that was the main complaint of the customer we got rid of the cassette mechanism noise and uh, the CD player started working more or less, it only reads some discs, but uh, it's acceptable, it needs a new laser pickup. So wrapping things up, I think the machine came out quite nice, it was a nice repair, it was the first time I had success adjusting the potentiometer and having a CD player reading uh, discs again and the first time I did coated a transformer with varnish I think this one was a partial success but for me the most satisfying part was to get rid of the hum of the transformer that's the fix that the customer was wanting to do so wrapping everything up it's time for me to go. I want to thank every one of you that has been watching and commenting the videos and putting likes, of course. Uh, I have 100 subscribers uh, and, and counting, so I'm very happy that you people are enjoying the videos. So I hope I can do a lot more and uh, even better each time. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your support and until the next one, bye, have fun.